Question one. In a cell, what is the effect of a large surface area to volume ratio? So this question can get a bit tricky sometimes and it always seems to be an issue for me because I get confused between surface area to volume ratio. But to summarize, just know that a large surface area, so a large surface area to volume ratio is for a small sized cell. Small sized cell. Whereas a low surface area to volume ratio is for a large sized cell. So let's quickly draw something down here. Let's have this big cell here with its nucleus as well as mitochondria not mitochondria, I mean ribosomes, um, as well as a small cell here with small nucleus and ribosomes there. So this one, because it's a large size cell, it's going to have a small surface area to volume ratio. Whereas this one is going to be the opposite of that. Okay, coming back to here. In a cell, what is the effect of a large surface area to volume ratio. So if this large surface area to volume ratio is a small size cell, what this tends to mean is that they there's a lot of room, there's a lot of surface area for things to be either absorbed or things to be lost. Okay? So think of it, it's very easy for it to for things to go in and very easy for things to go out. So A a slower rate of exchange of waste materials. That's exactly the opposite of what I've said before. So it's not this one. In fact, it would be a faster rate of exchange. Faster heat loss, that sounds brilliant because we've talked about previously that there's, um, a, there's a larger amount of membrane for, the, uh, for materials, not just um, sugar and nutrients, but also heat to be lost. Faster rate of mitosis. We talked previously before about things answers that are red herrings. This is definitely a red herring. It's got nothing to do with mitosis at all. So let's ignore that one. A slower intake of food. No, no, no. It's not that one. It's it, well, That would be a faster intake of food as the mo molecules could diffuse straight in at a faster rate. So therefore it's B, this particular question. Question number two. How can cells in a multicellular organism differentiate? So let's highlight these. A multicellular organism is really important. So we're not talking about a bacteria and also about the word differentiate. So how does it become more specialized in its function? This requires a bit of theory that we're going to go back to. So in the majority of cells, so whether that be a hair cell, a brain cell, a liver cell, uh, you've got all the genetic data, you've got all the genetic makeup that you need. The only thing that prevents you from all hair cells being um, a brain cell at the same time is that certain genes are activated and certain ones are not. So that really embodies A here. And this question is really about knowing your theory at the start. But we're going to go through B, C and D and turn it, tell it about why they're wrong as well. So B, they all have a different genetic composition. No, this is absolutely wrong. If different cells of the same person had a different genetic composition, that would mean that those particular cells don't belong to the same person. Because you can get cells from the same person, whether that be a hair cell, a brain cell, whatever, and they would have exactly the same genetic makeup. It's just like what I said previously, except in the reverse. Different cells contain a different set of chromosomes. This is exactly the same as B. It's talking about different genetic composition, essentially, so it's not that one. D, different cells do not have some of the genes. Once again, it's a similar answer to B, because if you don't have some genes, then your genetic composition or the genes that you have are not the same. So in, in essence, B, C and D are all saying exactly the same thing, which is why they're wrong. Let's look at question three now. So the scale bar here represents 0.5 micrometers. How long are both cells in total? So fairly easy question, but let's just make sure. So it talks about how long are both cells. 
okay? How long are both cells, not just one of the cells? So if we kind of move this and move it from one end of the cells to another, so we can say, okay, so that's about one, two, three, four, five. So it's about five, you know, not exactly. And obviously my lengths are not exactly the same as that. In the exam, you most likely have a ruler, so you can measure that quite precisely. So how long are both cells in total? So we know that it's 0.5 micrometers, which is the length of one bar, times by one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, it's 2.5 micrometers. But unfortunately, if we look at A, B, C, and D, there are none there. What we can do is we can cross off A and B already because it's not going to start with a five, isn't it? Starting with a two, 2.5. So it's one of these two at the bottom. And in order to know which one it is, then you just need to know how micrometers and meters are related. So there are actually one million micrometers in one meter, or 10 to the power of six micrometers equals one meter. So therefore, one micrometer equals 10 to the power of minus six meters. So then if we're talking about one micrometer, so one micrometer is 10 to the power of minus six meters, then this is the same as one micrometer. So therefore our answer is C. This one here is actually 2.45 nanometers, which is really small. Let's talk about one of our final questions. Which functions of life are found in all unicellular organisms? So there's a bunch of different ones here, and when I first looked at this question, it was a bit confusing. But we can make sure that we highlight the word unicellular, because that is a key term. Like in what we talked about before, unicellular, one cell, we're not talking about uh, cells which are eukaryotic. So A, growth response and nutrition. Yeah, that seems okay. B, differentiation response and nutrition. Well, just by definition, dif differentiation doesn't occur in unicellular organisms because differentiation refers to the fact that different cells of a multicellular organism can produce different functions. So you might have a lung cell here, you might have a brain cell on my head, etc. So in this case, differentiation is wrong. So we know that that's not B. Let's look down here at D, differentiation here as well. <laughs> Let's get rid of it as well. Okay? And if we go back to C now, metabolism, meiosis, and homeostasis. So remember in unicellular organisms that they divide via binary fission. And that is a asexual form of reproduction. Meiosis, on the other hand, is not about that. Meiosis is more about sexual reproduction. So therefore, it's not C either, it's actually A, growth, response and nutrition. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.